Hey Board Game Maniacs, Maniac Rob with Maniac Brady and we are here to bring you an exclusive battle report of the game Omnicron Protocol. By Dead Alive Games. By Dead Alive Games, that's right. Now Brady and I did a test game off camera just so we can get familiar with the rules. It is a great game. It's a tabletop skirmish game in an intra-post apocalyptic battle scene. There's different scenarios you can pick. We're going to show you what scenario we picked out, what faction we picked and also what team members for the faction we picked too as well. Now just to let everybody know that this video could be posted onto the Kickstarter page or after the Kickstarter is finished but in either case you can just click on the link below and you can go so you can purchase this incredible apocalyptic game because it is a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun playing the test game and Brady did too as well didn't you? Yep. So Brady did say this is one of his favorite games and we played a lot of games on the channel. So Let's see how this game plays out and what you think of it because I thought it was great mechanics and everything. But in any other case, let's go to the board. Let's look at the setup, the scenario, the characters, the factions, and start battling out. Before we look at all the characters, the factions, everything in the board setup, this is one of the scenario cards that comes into the game. This is called Supply Line. Now, with this scenario card, it shows you how to set up the terrain, where to put the sims, our cyber memetic sociopaths and we're starting area for each faction and so forth on here and if you look on the other side of this this is pretty cool the way they have this set up it explains you like the special rules the, the final round criteria everything that you need to know is in this one scenario card we'll go over this in more detail as we play the game but just be aware that this is from the core game and everything again is prototype they could be a little bit of changes going on here but, uh, you know, like, Brady and I played this game and we love it the way it is. So, in either case, if you change it anymore, it's going to be even better. Or if they keep it like it is, it's going to be incredible too as well. And you can see here, this is the board setup. And for the board setup, you see we have terrain, different types of terrain that is on the board. Now, in the, the rule book and so on, you can pick terrain which is going to be like tall terrain, short terrain and so on and Brady and I agreed off camera that all this terrain on the board is going to be classified as short terrain which does not block line of sight but to go onto or pass over one of these terrains it takes an extra point of movement but for some characters and factions they have which is called parkour specialist where it only counts as one and we'll explain that as we go along during the game you can see right there, there's a token right in the middle of these standees. These represent the Sims. And in this game, the uh, scenario supply line, we have to pick it up and take it to our starting area. So Brady's starting area is here. My starting area is here. So we have to pick it up and take it back. And we get a victory point for everyone we do. Now, every time we pick one up and we start moving it, another one is going to be populated as well. On the scenario card here too as well, you can see Sims Noise Spawn Table. So noise, when it comes time to spawning Sims, if there's one to six noise, one Sim will spawn. Seven to 12, two and so on. So this makes it very easy to follow. And at the end of the round, you'll have what is called a round spawn for Sims. So there's four Sims at the end of each round, which is divided into two because there's two players. So Brady will take two Sims and spawn them and I'll take two and spawn them too as well. Also, just to mention that this game is rated 13 plus. The average time is between 60 to 120 minutes and it is two to four players. They do have two other modes of play into this game. One is solo mode. One is cooperative mode, and the one that I didn't mention too as well, which is even a, another game one, is a free-for-all free -for -all or battle royale kind of mode, which is really cool. But we are playing 1v1, so one player versus one player in this scenario. Looking a little closer at the scenario, just so we are all on the same page with this. So scenario objective, pick up supply, part of move sidestep. Delivery supply, you get one action point. Dropping, exchanging supply, it takes one action point with an adjacent hex or character. Scoring scenario objectives. So this is how we get our victory points. Delivering supply, we get one victory point. Knocking out non-friendly characters is one victory point. And if we KO five sims, it is one victory point too as well. And they also have a terrain layout, required terrain. So see illustration, which again is on the back, which I already went over. 
Now, you can add additional terrain, and it's 30 hexes for the percentage that you can add more terrain, but we're going to keep it exactly like it is onto the scenario here for the supply line. And on top of that, it gives you some special rules. So supply location, it says see illustration, supply is unlimited, which means that you can pick up as many as you want. But the one, uh, the one stipulation of that is you can pick up more than one supply at one, at one time. So each character can only hold one supply until they drop it off. Each character equals one supply token max, which I just explained. Models stopping on supply token hexes push one hex in random direction. Models may stand past through a hex with a supply in it. KO'd characters immediately drop supplies in hex. That's it. Now, we played this again off camera once and we got down to tiebreaker. And with the tiebreaker, it gives you some uh, things how you can determine which is going to, well, it's going to determine who's the winner, such as first supply delivery, scenario objective VP, KO character VP, VP, and Sims KO VP. So that is for tiebreaker. Here's a look at some of the miniatures. Now, this is from the faction Peacemaker. The miniatures are really nice quality too as well. They are only spray bombed in gray because they're not painted. They may change a bit again. This is all prototype, but everything is awesome so far. So Brady, do you want to tell us about each of your characters? So start with the, the main guy here, which I do not like at all. And who is that? So first of all, we these are the peacekeepers. Okay. And that guy's Buck. Buck. All right. Now with Buck, he has some special abilities. We're not going to go over all of it. Just so the fact is, is once we are going to do it, we'll explain it on camera because you can do a lot of things with each of these characters, such as like there's luck tokens involved, walking, running, attack, dexterity, and hit points. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the hit points for Buck. How many hit points does Buck have? Thirteen. Thirteen. So he's a pretty tanky individual. Next on the faction for Peacemakers, Brady picked Flash. Do you want to tell me a little bit about Flash? Just like his, his health. His name is Flash. Um, he, I also named him McDash. McDash? Yeah, Flash McDash. McDash? Okay. And he has 10 health. 10 health too as well. And he has a pretty cool, interesting special beliefs, which you will see. Next to him is a character by the name of Pi. Pi. And what's her health? Her health is nine. All right, and the last but not least, the one holding the cannon, well, it's a like a sniper rifle, is a bolt. Bolt, and her health is nine in total. Is that yep, correct? Nine in total. Awesome. And on my side, I have the survivalists. They have a special ability as a team too, as well, which we will encounter as the game goes on. But let's look a little closer at each of them. You can see this guy right here holding a, a pipe. It looks like. His name is Thug, and he has a health of 16, so he's my tank. And next to him is going to be Lucky. He has a health of 6. Next to Lucky right here is Seeker, and she has a health of 6 as well. And next is the last one, which is Artemis, and it has a health of 8. Now, what's interesting about the faction for the survivalists is they're pretty stealthy. They don't have any cybernetic implants or anything except for Thug, the big guy. And he's not stealthy at all. He's a big tank, so he kind of goes in for close range melee and does a lot of damage. One thing I want to point out now is this, each faction has a special ability. And Brady's special ability for Peacemaker is... Marksmanship. And what does Marksmanship do? Each friendly character gets plus one attack and range attacks and reduce the penalty of cover by one minus one attack. Great. So you get an extra die every time you make a range attack, more or less, and it's going to reduce the the so attack dice? or is it penalty for cover by one. Right. Because you can get uh, penalties like minus two attack dice, minus one attack dice during the game for cover and so on, but that just reduces it by one. That's pretty cool. And I've seen this firsthand off camera playing the game. And it wasn't very pretty for my team at all. And my survivalist, the special abilities for that, is Danger Sense. Each friendly character may ignore a total of three Sims attack damage in the game after the Sims attack roll. So if Sims are attacking my survivalist faction, 
It can, they can soak up three damage each before they start taking actual hit points. But that's only for the Sims. But if non-friendly characters such as the Peacemakers attack, attack, the danger sense does not work. There will also be uh, some game tutorial, gameplay videos that are on YouTube besides from this one too as well. This isn't so much of a tutorial, but pretty much just a gameplay for this uh, scenario supply line. That's right. So go check them out onto their Dead Alive games. You can check them out on YouTube where they're going to have tutorial videos and so on so you can follow along. Very simple videos to follow along with. It taught us very quickly how to play the game. And we're just going to go on from there. So we're going to roll off now to see who's initiative to decide who's going to go first. For initiative, highest one decides. Go ahead, Brady. So you got a one. Oh, buddy. I got a one. We got to do a reroll. <laughs> Go ahead, Brady. Three. Four. Ah, so therefore, I'm going to go first. But before we do that, we have to talk about the characters. So we have forage cards. Each faction gets four forage cards that can divvy up before the gameplay starts and who they want to put the forage cards with. And we're going to do that off camera. We'll be back when we're going to be knee deep in killing some Sims and rival factions ha ha we have our forage cards you can see they're set up for each character too as well on brady's side myself and also just to mention is when we start the game we, each character has one luck token that can be used during the game and we'll explain that as we encounter it and also each faction has eight of these action points that they can use during their game to play and use to attack and activate special abilities and everything else all the goodness that you're going to see in this video so anyhow it is on to be my first turn i gotta think about who i'm going to activate and what they're going to do on my first activation i'm going to activate thug now thug has a characteristic of walk which is a free action for three but he can run which will generate one noise or one em noise em noise is pretty much what happens when a character does certain things and it will start interacting with the sims that are within that range and they can come in to attack. You'll see it more during the video. But anyhow, Thug here, he has a walk of three, but I'm going to run Thug. So he has a run of six. So I spend one of my action points and I'm going to take Thug here. I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six. So Thug has done that, and that, and for running you get one EM noise. Thank you, Brady, for putting that in there. And I have to think if Thug is going to do anything else. See, he's a melee character. You don't have any range, so he may not be able to do anything else. He has some passive. He has a passive ability, and some cybernetic active abilities too as well. But I don't think any of that is going to help Thug. So Thug just maybe just doing that i'll be back just gotta think about this because brady destroyed thug very easily in our off camera game i thought about it i looked at his card and i'm just gonna, i'm happy with thug just being like he is now this is not in the rules to do but just so if you don't use action points which are these things sometimes just for me, I kind of forget to tend that I activated a miniature. So I just took a dice, a die, and I'm putting it onto him. The number don't mean anything, but as you see this playing the game, it just means that that character activated. So that ends Thug's activation, and we're on to Brady to activate one of his peacemakers. Brady, who are you activating for your Flash peacemakers? Flash McDash. Okay. Going one. I'm at running him. You're going one, two, three, four, five, six. So he has a run of six. Now you spend one of your action points on your card. So you place it there. And now what is Flash going to do? Flash is going to use Timmy Fetch. Timmy Fetch. And what does that do? I can make, I can target an objective marker and move it two spaces towards me. So does that cost any action points? Uh, one. Okay, so that's an extra one. Again, remember, we have eight total action points that we can use during each round but one stipulation of that is is each character can only use them up to a max of four action points so timmy flesh would fletch 
Fetch. Fetch! What are you doing? I can't even talk. So what did you do there? Moved it. But what, what does... Can you repeat what Timmy Fetch means? It goes here. Sorry. It says... Once per round, you may move an objective token to an unoccupied hex up to two hexes closer to this model. Alright, so the objective token was here and it went one, two. But now, for characters, so some characters have to interact. They spend one action point to pick it up, but they have to be on to it. So, next, Flash is going to shoot at them. You're going to shoot at, you're declaring an attack actually, on this sim? No. I'm actually just going to leave him like that. You're going to stay exactly like that? Yes. All right. Now, these are limitless supplies, but until this is picked up, another one don't spawn there. So it's on to my next activation. On to my next activation, I am going to activate uh, Seeker. So Seeker has a walk of five and a run of seven. I'm my activation for Seeker. Seeker is here and I ran. So it created one noise, used one action point, and went up to this. So now, what Seeker is going to do, because Seeker is very stealthy, don't make noise when it does any range or melee attack. So Seeker is going to do a range attack. So it gets four attack dice, and hopefully going to hit one of the Sims. I'm declaring it onto this one right here. Here's a look at the Sims rules card. So the ability is heals to normal and removes stun conditions at the end of the turn. This is for Sims again. Um, all Sims start normal. Every two damage changes the state of the Sims to partial damage. Stunning a stun Sim KOs them. Now their stats are move two, attack two, dexterity of three. And you can see the little flow chart here. So normal to KO is four damage all at one time or two damage to give them partial damage, and then two more damage will knock them out. But again, if you don't do this for the round, then they go back to normal too as well. But what I'm planning to do with Seeker, let's look at Seeker's card so I can explain that a little bit more first. On Seeker's card, this is called the Action Store. So attack of four, no matter if you're making a melee or range, you are going to roll four attack dice. And during the game, you can only hit them like you you if you spend four you get four successful results this is a poor example right here i should have picked another character but in either case you can hit them one damage one action point for one damage and so on and then hit them again you can only hit them once and you'll see that as we go along but anyhow i got four dice to roll to do a range attack and if i get two successes then I do one damage. And as we looked at the Sims card, their dex is three, so I have to get a three plus to do any damage to the Sim. Here goes. So this is my roll. So it has to be a three plus. Now, because I successfully hit them, their dex gets dropped down to two plus now. But one of Seeker's special ability is active abilities, I should say, is called Concuss. No action points needed, no range limitation, and no EM noise. But what Concuss does is when making a range attack, if a six hit result is spent, the target is stunned. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna spend this six hit result, and I'm going to stun that sim. You can see the little blue token, that is a token for stunning. So the six is spent and I still have three more points that I can do stuff with because it is above the three for dexterity for the Sims. Now, with Seeker, I could spend one to do a sidestep. I can spend two to steal or I can spend four to do a sidestep of two. I think what I'm going to do, just so I can get a little bit of cover, even though that uh, Seeker is actually hidden, so Seeker, she starts the round with Hidden. And what Hidden is, is range attacks can only target this model from within range three. So if, so just say Brady is going to be shooting at Seeker and he is five away, he can't shoot because she is hidden. And that is one of her passive abilities. And she also has Parkour Specialist. And what Parkour Specialist means is, again, where it takes two action or two moving points to move on to this. If you're a parkour specialist, it only counts as one, which is really good. 
but I have three more left, like I said, to spend. So I'm going to spend one of my results to do a side step. And that side step just lets me move up here into cover. So now she's, she's still hidden and she's in cover, which is really good. This is short terrain, remember. For her last two points that she has, she is going to spend these two because there's the reason why I'm spending two of them, there's two of them are five, and if you look on her card, luck is five plus, so she can spend two of her points to get two more luck tokens. So now she has three luck tokens on her card, and I'm still gonna activate her because why should I stop? Because this sim, all I have to do is stun this sim one more time, and if I stun the sim one more time, that sim is KO'd, and that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend one more action point on Seeker and I'm going to roll the four die and hopefully get another six so that I can stun this sim again. Let's go and see if I do it. Here goes, you can do this, you can do the Seeker. Oh, look at that Brady, three sixes. Huh, what do you gotta say about that? I think it's dead. No, it's knocked out, it's KO'd. Oh, I understand. That's right. So, because I rolled three sixes, I could spend one of them six results for this here sim to be knocked out. That's a really good ability that Seeker has for that, which is really cool, but I still have two more sixes that I can spend. Now with these two sixes, this one don't count at all because I had to at least get a two plus, but it was a one. I could spend a luck token if I wanted to to increase this, but I don't think I really need to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna worry about the luck thing. So that is spent to KO'd. And also too as well, I got two more six ones left. Um, I'm thinking I might just grab two more luck tokens if I'm not, or maybe I can do a sidestep of two. Just, but I like where I'm at. I'm like where I'm in the cover here. So yeah, I'm just gonna spend these last two results and grab two more luck tokens. That is ending, I'm gonna end the activation of Seeker because Seeker did exactly what she wanted to do. So Seeker killed one of the Sims, so she gets one point. She's four away from getting one victory point. On the survivalist card where I say I'm marking it, you can see it has certain things here like Sims KO count, scenario objective KO characters, Sims KO five to one, and objective card. So I put one dot in the Sims KO count. So once I fill up this five, I put one down into Sims KO, which will count as one victory point for me. Like I said, I am four away from this. Just a little side note about this is we forgot to do one thing before Seeker activated, and that is every time a character goes, you will and finishes their activation, then you have to have to activate sims that are on the board. And the way you activate the sims from the board, so Brady made two noise, so then that counts for two octagon zones, or two zones away. So Brady, there's one, two. So this sim will activate, one, two. That sim will activate two as well. And that is it, because all the rest of these are out of range. So the way that sims activate is they have movement of two, and every time they attack, they only roll two dice. So I'm gonna activate this one first. And it's gonna go one, two, and to activate and attack uh, one of the models, it has to be adjacent. So this sim is going to activate now, two die. And what is dexterity on two flash? His flash is three. His dexterity three. is three plus. So if I roll a three plus, it's damage. Ooh, two sixes. So Brady, flash takes two damage from that one sim. So on the bottom of the card, you can see Brady marking down. That's where you keep track of your hit point counters. So that is that one. Now we have to activate the second one, which is here. Now again, this is terrain. Moving there, because it's adjacent now. This sim is going to attack Brady too as well. Two more dice, or flash, I should say, not Brady. Hopefully you get two more sixes again, Brady, and you can take two more damage. That would be really detrimental to you. Oh no! That's a whiff, because Brady's dexterity is a three plus, so that sim completely failed. Flash got wise, he's seen the first one attack, and I'm not getting hit like that again, and did a duck. That was it, really good. So now, let's go into this activation. Now again, 
whenever Seeker does an attack, it don't generate any EM noise because she's silent. But she has one noise from run, but there's zones of one away. So it'd be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. But there's no Sims within that range, so nothing attacks. And we didn't do anything for Flash because there's obviously no Sims within the one range. Just so we're on the same page and everybody understands about this. So after every character activates and finishes their activation, the Sims will activate. So we're on with the game again because I'm thinking it's your turn now, Brady, if I'm not mistaken, for your next character. Brady is going to activate Buck. So what is Buck doing? He's first drinking a blue cow energy drink. A blue cow energy drink. And that is a forager card? A forage. Forage card, yes. So do you want to explain what the blue use cow energy drink is? is used during this model's activation. This model gains plus one walk or run for its next movement action. Plus one walk or run for his next movement action. Because you activate it, you played the card, so it's his movement now. So where are you going with Buck? Buck is running. Okay. And what is Buck's run speed? Five, but I... But get the, the card, gives it one extra one. All right, so that takes up one activation point, and you get one noise emitted on Buck. And then the next thing I'm doing with Buck is I'm using his ability. And what is his ability that you're using? Shotgun Blast. Shotgun Blast. So it takes one action point to use that? Two. Two action points. And what does Shotgun Blast do? It generates... The special ability that Brady's using is Shotgun Blast. It's an AoE or area of effect. It is onto his card. Can I see your card for a second here, Brady? Just to show everybody what his box card looks like. So you can see, see here... This is the, you can see in the red and box icon is there. So this is his AOE template for Buck and Shotgun Blast. Characters hit are stunned, Sims hit are KO'd. So that's a pretty powerful shotgun. Just a big spray, it's like boom, and just down they go. So Brady will roll five attack dice and he has Peacemaker. Little correction there is into the little handy a uh, reference card that you get in the game, which is awesome. These here, everything is on the back and front for turn sequence and also the actions available and everything. Where he's using the AOE, he has to roll one die for every non-friendly model that is in that area. So he's gonna roll three dice, but he does have the Peacemaker special ability of markmanship. So he gets one extra die to roll. Now again, just so everybody is aware of this, hit, hit, and hit. So these are the three that are going to be affected, isn't it, Brady? No, it's only these two. Oh, those two, because they're out of range, is that? It only goes this way or this way. Oh, and I'm choosing to target those two. These two here? Yeah. Okay. So Brady's shooting has a minimum of three dice. Now, because of the marksmanship for the Peacemaker, it does say in the card, though, AOE, and in the book, it's only a minimum of three dice. So he does roll three dice, and none of these are stunned, so therefore they have a dex of three. So you have to get a three plus to damage. I hit both of them. You hit two of them. So they're automatically KO'd. Yeah. Because it, that's what the that massive blast from the shotgun does. So mark on your sheet, 2KO. Brady's deciding to stop his activation now for Buck. On to my turn. Before it's my turn, the Sims have to go and attack. So now they are going to move. So first this one is going to move one, but to get up onto the train, he has to do two to do it because it, it is short terrain. He can't move anymore and he don't have the range to attack. Next sim right here is going to go one, two, and same thing for here. And the sims always have to move to whoever generated the noise. So now this one is going to go one, two. Oh, it is landing directly, directly onto the token that is needed. Even though the Sim cannot attack Buck, it still moved, but it is within range to attack Flash. So the two for Flash. Brady, hope that this Sim don't get two sixes. I don't care. Because what's the damage on to Flash right now? Two. Two. And he has, oh, he has a ten. I thought he had six. Never mind, you're still good. Six and a three. And what is the dex of two Flash? Hit. He gets two because it's three plus. 
Ooh, okay, so that's two more damage onto poor Flash. Just a little quick note about this as I was talking to Brady you now, because this sim moved in and is on top of this objective marker, you know, the other one would spawn right here, but it don't spawn until this one is picked up, the supply token. So right now, I don't know if Brady planned this or not, but none of my other characters over here are gonna be able to pick up a supply until this one is taken care of. So that's an interesting little tactic that Brady did for me. I am deciding I'm going to activate Lucky. I'm going to spend an action point to run Lucky because Lucky hopefully is going to be Lucky. And he's going to run... Actually, no. I'm not spending this to run because you don't have to. He can walk up to six as his speed. So that's what he's going to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now... I was planning on shooting because uh, Lucky's range is 2 to 5, generating no noise because he's very stealthy too. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to target this sim right here to shoot at. And that's what the action point is on Lucky was to shoot. So now I get 4 attack dice to shoot at this sim right here. Here goes. So I got a grand total of 4 successes. Lucky is lucky at shooting. So because of that, and if you look on Lucky's card over here, range two to five, EM noise is zero, but I can spend all four to do two damage. So therefore, Lucky was lucky and hit this sim for two damage. In the game, these tokens are originally used for burning, I think it is, but we're gonna just use this for damage. So I'm just placing it by this miniature right here. And that is two damage. Now, he's halfway damaged. Or what did it say, Brady? Could you recall what it says? It's it uh, says partial damage. Partial that's what damage. it is. Yes, that's right. So now, Lucky's going to spend another action point to hopefully do the same thing and KO this sim. Let's see. Now, because remember, the dex has gone down by one, so from three to two, so that's four more successful hits and I'm gonna keep it so that means that sim is KO'd and I put another notch onto Lucky's or onto my uh, victory point conditions and because Lucky walked instead of run he does not generate any noise so he is fine and I think that is all Lucky is going to do because he spent all of his uh, his successes to do the two damage and that sim was KO. Now I do have, I can spend an action point if I want to, actually no, I can't spend an action point for anything. So yeah, Lucky is done and it's on to Brady's turn. What are you doing there, Brady? I'm activating Pi. Pi, that's making me hungry. I'm gonna go walk one, two, three. And I'm gonna use remote control. Remote control. Now, you do have another passive ability, and what is that passive ability on your card? Caffeinated. Once per round, this model may use one of its active abilities, costing one AP for free. So, originally, because you're using caffeinated, and so because that's your passive and you're using remote control, how many action points does it take for that? One. So, so it's therefore, free. it's free activation point for that. That's Pi's turning to be a pretty powerful little girl. She's not really little, she's a woman, but in either case, so you're gonna do that, and how many zones away can you do this? One. I can do three zones, so okay. one, two, three, and it's three zones. And you're taking and lifting it off of the scenario objective for the supply. That's a really smart move to do. So, and that didn't even cost any action points yet. Yeah, it did. So, do you have any range attacks that you can... I can't attack anybody because my miniatures are blocking the line of sight. You No, miniatures, your miniatures don't block Friendly miniatures don't block line of sight. Oh, I thought they did. No. Oh, okay. Only non-friendly do, but friendly I, does not. Well, I have range two to six. Yeah, I can definitely hit it. All so, right, so right you're now. going to declare attack on the one you moved? Yeah. Okay. So how many dice? First, I have to do this. I have to put the two noise for the ability I used. Oh, it generated noise. Ah, uh, okay. So now you're going to shoot into this sim here, the Kung Fu girl. You can see really cool looking looks That's like she's sweet. got kung fu and 
How many dice do you get? I get four for attack, but I also get one because of marksmanship. Because your peacemaker ability. All right, roll away. You remember, three plus. And it's peacekeepers. What did I say? Peacemaker. Oh yeah, peacekeeper, sorry. Oh, look at that. You you successfully hit them all. Five. So how much damage does... I can do a maximum of three, but what's the point of doing that? When I can go... Uh, so if you spend two on pi, just say two of the lowest results. I'm going to spend two on pi. And that will give this... This miniature here would take two damage. It's that, and we're not using this, we're using the fire token. Oh yes, the fire token for the damage, that's right. And then for my next, I'm going to spend two more results, which is these two, to use shift, move back one. Actually, I'm here, so I'm going to move back one. Okay. So you did shift, you moved. So this sim is partially damaged. Now, are you going to, because you, you're still within range, because of the, the max range getting, you have is six. But before I do that, I'm spending my last result to get a luck token. Okay, because you had a six, because what is Locks, Pi's luck? Uh, five plus. Five plus, so a luck token to you. In and we'll explain how we use, how you use luck tokens in the game when we come up that we need to do it. So, are you going to spend another action point now to do another attack? Yes. All right. Oh boy. Oh, this is this is all bad, but I have two luck tokens. And also too as well, you hit that Sims once, so their dex is down to two instead of three. So So these are successful, this is successful, these are not. So I'm gonna spend the last two two hit results, two, these two to kill it. To KO it, yep. And the other one to get another luck token. Another luck token. So don't forget to mark off that you, you KO'd one of the Sims. Because of all that fancy shooting, now the Sim will activate the only one that is within range 6. So remember, 2 for the trench, that's 2. So now, actually hold on, so you got to move to the to the closest one. But technically, my hand's kind of in the way, can move here or here. And I'm choosing to move that sim here because it is still moving closer, closest to the noise. But now this sim is going to attack poor Flash again because Flash is right in front. But you could attack Buck. Yeah, no, Buck is a tank. It, Buck, I would hit him all day and Buck would just look and go, ha ha, ha ha. Because he got body armor too as well. Yeah, he got body armor. Yeah. Oh, actually, do you want to explain about Buck's ability with the body armor, Brady? Because again, that's body one character. Reduce the damage applied to this model by one to a minimum of one. That's right, because that's a buck is one of the is a bane to my existence. Because the simple fact is, when we played this game off camera, every time a sim would attack buck, nope, I had to roll one less die, one less die, and I always whiffed no, on the it roll. Wasn't one less die? It was that you would get minus one damage that you would take. I thought it was minus one attack. No, it was. Oh, it's, yeah. See, I'm kind of getting mixed up here because playing so many games, but yeah. Gonna attack poor uh, Flash here. Hopefully, do some more damage to Flash. Three plus for both, and Flash's is three plus for Dexter. So that's two more damage onto poor little Flash. On my turn, Artemis was here and is running, so it's taking one action point to run up to here for Artemis to sh gonna shoot at poor old Flash. Flash is getting picked at. So, five range away. Well, I mean, so, it's just payback, because last time I picked that thug a lot. You certainly did pick that thug a lot. I mean, a lot. You K'd out him once, and then he came back, and then you kept hitting him, and he was only down to two health left. Like, you totally were destroying uh, thug. Well, he's not that smart, so. I, it don't say. He's a cybernetic. He's got to have some yeah, kind of but intelligence. his name's Thug. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna argue with that point. So here, so Ran created and I got one more action point left. And oh yeah. You're gonna shoot at the flash or you're gonna shoot at the sim, because if you kill the sim then you could possibly get another victory point. I'm using this one action point to activate one of uh Artemis' active abilities, and that active ability is double shot once per round, make two separate range attacks against the same target. What's um, how much noise does it generate? Um, none, silent, no. it only costs one action point. 
It says that, does it? Double shot it? yet? It says EM, EM noise. noise is one. It doesn't matter if you're shooting, it's still no, no. It's an ability. EM noise oh, right sorry, there is a dash. Yeah, you were seeing it from a distance. So anyhow, poor Flash is getting shot at twice. Ooh. Ooh boy. Ooh boy. First one. All I need is a three plus, baby. Uh, oh, Brady, uh, guess what? I think Flash is knocked out. Hold on a second. This one here, she's gonna spend Why her, gonna spend her luck. Hold on a second. How much is left on Flash? Three. Three? Um, What's the point in spending luck? Well, because you get two shots. I can. I get two shots. Right. Yeah, that's right. You're. You're right. So therefore, because of that. Um. Yeah, uh, this actually comes up with a good. I'm uh, kind of quiet on camera because I'm kind of doing some thinking. So let's look at Artemis here. So. I can do it twice, so if I spend three of them, I can take two hits. And you can see here, I got one, two, three, four successes. And if I spent the luck, what Brady was saying, why am I gonna do that? Because it's still not enough to do it again, because you can only hit the one time. Like, I couldn't spend another one to do one more damage because it's all or nothing. But because it's a double shot, I'm able to shoot again, but I can't use this one. So that one's out of it, because I'm not bothered using luck. But Three successes, I'm gonna take this here, and Brady takes two damage, or Flash takes two damage. I have one of those left. Uh, the luck is a five plus, so I'm gonna gain another luck for the six. And now, I'm going on to the second shot at Flash. Now, how much damage one. has Flash got left? One. One more damage. Second double shot, I just said revenge is sweet, but I'm, Hoping I don't whiff on this, but we'll find out. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, flash is Total up. no whiff. So I can spend three to get two more damage. Flash is dead anyway. Why would you spend three on them? When you can only oh, spend I have one. To, I have to spend... You don't have to oh, spend... Oh, you only had one more damage yeah. left? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, yes. So flash is KO'd. And I'll explain to you what happens to a model when it comes KO. So I'm going to take my lowest pointing score for that. So now I have... Three left that I can do stuff. Um, you could get luck. Three luck. Mm, or I can spend two onto a sidestep to get closer. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend two to do a sidestep. So I'm going to take her, Artemis, and I'm going to move one back for the sidestep. And the next one I'm going to spend to get one more luck token. When a character is KO'd or knocked out, because in Omnicron Protocol, there's no actual death. They're just, the characters are knocked out. So Flash is going to stay here. The EM noise is gone. The KO token is left there to let us know knocked out. Knocked out. Now, if this character did not activate during the round, but Flash already did, but just say it didn't activate, then it only has one action point and it only has health up to the recovery level onto the character card. But where Flash already activated this round, what happens is on the next round, Flash is going to be okay, but he only has health up to his recovery level and he only has two action points max that he can spend for his round. So. That's not good for Flash, because Flash is going to be in some pretty dire straits next time. But the M noise is gone. I was off camera. You gain a victory point? I gain a victory point for Kaon, one of the non-friendly characters. And that's about it. This is the first time I actually knocked somebody out, Brady. Like, you knocked out Thug off camera. So do you know what, Brady? I'm zooming out here, because I'm going to you, because it's payback time. Mm, okay. Poor Flash is Kaon. At least he's not as dumb as Thug. Hey, you don't know if Thug, don't say that Thug is dumb. And His just name to, is Thug. Thug, that's what he said. And just to, uh, just to correct something out too as well, is the ability that Flash has, which is uh, Fetch Timmy, that's what Brady said, or Timmy I Fetch? I named the robot Timmy, even though it says TMI, I named it Timmy. It's TMI Fetch, it's not T-I-M Yeah, but I just Fetch. named him Timmy. Yeah. But anyhow, yeah, the, the, the ability is kind of called Fetch Timmy, or Timmy Fetch instead of TMI Fetch. Well, just think of it, a little kid is going, hey, 
Timmy, go fetch, like a mother or something. But Flash like, isn't a kid. But the person that he's sending out to go get... Yeah, the TMI is... Uh, a child, so... No, TM, TMI is not a child. I think it's... On the miniature, it looks like this little robot floating yeah, thing. Yeah, but he named it his child because he can't have children. Oh, so you're going so child. sad with this game right now. Uh, and now let's go on with the game, shall we? <laughs> we're on to Brady's last activation, and you're activating Bolt. Bolt. And what is Bolt doing? Is that a walk or a run? A walk. A walk, so... And then for Bolt's last, last, my last action point, I'm activating Overwatch on Bolt. Overwatch. So what does it say on your card about Overwatch, so everybody is aware if of? a non-friendly model and enters... Um, her line of sight, and it's in her weapon range. She gets to make a free range attack against them. Oh, yeah, I don't like that at all. All right, so can you do anything else? Because you don't got any other active. One, and I'm also just putting these two down. And what are those things that you're putting down? The first one is activated Overwatch, and the second one is because I have deep cover active. Yes. That ends all of the character's activation. Before so, we go into the next round, I was just going to explain what deep cover is, because I didn't explain it last time. No, deep cover is your passive ability, passive. correct? This model starts the round with hidden and plus one dexterity. Remove hidden and plus one dex when this model makes an attack. Okay, so right now you're still in deep cover. Yeah. So you get a plus one dex here, which makes you harder to hit. And I'm also hidden. And you're hidden, that's right. So that's that's really good, and also too as well is just another thing to point out is this Overwatch. At the end of the round, you have to clear all of the abilities and you start the next round off fresh. So therefore, Bolt here has Overwatch, but after this round is over, Overwatch is gone. But the reason why Brady put on Overwatch now is when the Sims activate and come in close proximity to her, then Brady gets a free shot attack at them, and that is how Overwatch is worked really well. But we're at the end of the activation of all the characters, and so now we have to do the Sims activation, and I'll explain that now on how that works. Start off with Pi. We, yes, we have to start off with Pi, because Pi is the loudest of six, and then five goes to... Buck. Buck, and then it's the ones after that. So number six, you look on your scenario card, and you can see here, noise is one to six, so one Sim activates, and the opposing player is going to do that. And then for five is going to be, for Buck has five noise, so one Sim's gonna activate. And then from there, we're gonna to go to these where they're going to activate. Then we do the other part of the Sim, sp sim phase, which is the spawning. So right now, this is just on to the Sim noise spawn table, and then we go on to the round spawn. Obviously. So the first one is here because of the noise. So it's going to attack Pi because it is adjacent, so I get two dice. And what is uh, Pi's dex? Uh, dex is 3+. plus. 3+, plus. so I need a 3+, plus to do some damage to Pi. Oh, 2, two damage eight. goes to Pi. That must have hurt Pi. Pi is okay. Pi likes Pi. Yeah, Pi, 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 pi likes carry, pi. pi. Pi carries some Pi in her backpack. Alright. Now, I could choose to move before I attack, but I didn't, and I'll show you why in a moment. So right now, we're on to, one is going to spawn to attack Buck. For this one now, originally it would, uh, would spawn there too as well, but because I didn't move, I chose to leave there, then this one can spawn anywhere it wants. It's gotta be adjacent to the spawn, so I'm doing there, and then it's going to move up one, and attacking Buck, but Buck is just gonna laugh at this. So it's two attack dice. Buck got body armor, so that's two hits. He only takes one. Because of your body armor, it absorbs one damage, so Buck is going to take one point of damage. All right, so that ends that part of the Sims on this side. So if we go to this now, one here, there's, because one the one the six noise, so Brady's going to spawn one to the closest spawn point. So go ahead, Brady, you're gonna do there, and then you have to move closer. So because you move closer, it's going to attack Artemis here, obviously. So Brady rolls two dice. Go ahead, Brady. Brady, you're going to just whiff it all. You whiffed one. Dex. 
Artemis' dex is four plus. You got a five, so it takes one damage, but from where Artemis has that special ability of danger sense, not real damage she, ta she takes, but she takes one of the danger sense off of her. The next noise is Seeker, got one, generate one noise, and Brady's the closer spawn point, so Brady goes there and moves two. Now, Brady moved two, so Brady can attack um, Lucky. Now, I'm shocked, Brady, that, oh yeah, you couldn't move closer to, uh, to poor old Thug to pick on him. So anyhow, two attacks onto thug, thug Lucky. Thug's brain is big strong. Big strong? Big strong. Okay. Thug's lane's big strong. Go ahead, two dice. And you got a two and a four, and Lucky's uh, dex is a five plus. So what? not one of them. The, Three pl five plus? Five plus oh for my Lucky. God. Do you know why Lucky got a five plus dex? Because he's lucky? Because he's lucky, that's right. Oh, geez. <laughs> so didn't even as much as touch Lucky one bit. So that one's gone. And now we have one more noise token to deal with our EM noise right there. So Brady spawning moves up and attacks Thug. Like, you you love picking on Do you Thug. Do you want to check his turn? Oh, it's not during his activation, so I don't think he can yeah, use it. Yeah, but some of them say when a non-friendly model targets this turn. True. Yeah. Let's, uh... Okay, that one's not gonna work. I'm just, oh, Brady's off camera. So, let me see these. In. No, I can't use either one of those. Okay, well, I'm just making sure. No, that's, I'm glad you pointed that out. And Thug is very big, so. He is very big. Big so, strong. But he has a dex of only two plus. He can hit him super easy. Oh, you whiffed one. I can spend a lot longer. You can't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too bad though. So Thug does take one damage, but because he has danger sense, it he marks off one there. Thanks Brady for doing that. And that ends that one there. So this is the first part of for the Sims. Now the next part is going to be the scenario Sim spawn or it, it's called round spawn, so it's four. So each of us get two sim miniatures. So there's two sims for Brady and two sims for me. And we're going to do this and we'll be back. So again, we get to pick whatever spawn we want to put around on the board. Again, I didn't point this out when we set up, but these are spawn points. So there's six of them in total for this scenario. So when we spawn them, we can put them anywhere we want and then we get to move up to two and then attack. Since I went first, I am going to spawn the first one. Now again, I want it to spawn here, but nope. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to attack poor Pi. Why are you attacking Pi? Like Pi didn't do nothing to Because the, the, the Sims are hungry. They need to eat some Pi. I'm activating the some Pi pot lid. When a non-friendly model declares an attack against this battle with this trigger, damage from the resulting or attack is reduced by one. Okay, say that a little louder so everybody can hear you. When a non-friendly model declares an attack against this model is the trigger. Damage from the resulting attack is reduced by one. Okay, damage. So if I get score two, then it's going to be one damage away. And, and if you take, if you score one, then I take no damage. Right, so Pi's dex is three. Uh, Pi has a dex of three. Okay, here goes. Give me more than three. Oh, so that's yeah. only one hit. But so don't even touch Pi whatsoever. Now you get to spawn one too as well. On to Brady to spawn his first of two sims. And where are you spawning it, Brady? Spawning this sim here. Okay, and you get to move two. So now you're going to attack Artemis. Artemis, yeah. All right, so two dice for Artemis. Does Artemis got a card that she could use? And no, she don't. All right. Four and a three, what's her? Dex? Artemis dex is four plus. So, so take one, one damage. So I take another danger sense mark. Now I get to spawn my last sim for the, the round spawn. It's gonna go here, but can't. So I'm gonna go there and also going to attack I'm actually Pi. going to activate um, Overwatch. Overwatch on Bolt. That's right. So now you get to shoot at this sim before he attacks Pi, because you may destroy possibly. So with Overwatch, what is your uh, your attack die value? I have six dice. I need another one. Okay, so six dice. And where are you getting the six? Is it with the plus one? For I get five the... attack originally, and then plus one for my piece. Okay, so roll it here, and you have to get a three plus to do any damage. Three, three, five, three. 
Okay, so four. I'm going to spend a luck to turn this to a three. Okay, so that one's gone. That's four five. And what is the damage store? Uh, four damage. It's dead. Four damage. So if you five results equals four damage. Really? Uh, that's a really powerful shot. Huh. That's no, 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 no! You can't take it away. Don't take it away. It's dead. It's gone. <laughs> Let me see that card. Let me see how powerful she is. Not that I don't believe you, but I don't believe you. <laughs> I know. I'm just, just so that everybody is aware. So look at the the ability here. So you had five successes because it was a three plus. So five successes is four damage. And as we all know, if you do four straight damage, you are KOing that sim. That was a good shot, Brady. Bolt is pretty powerful. Yeah. And that's out of sequence too, because it don't cost any any uh, action point, because you already spent it for Overwatch for her. Mm -hmm. So good job for Bolt and destroying that sim, but that also means- I get four noise. You may get four noise, but, Mm. But, 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 you also get put another notch in killing one of the Sims. Oh yeah, I do that. Too. Don't forget that, because that can equal, get you closer to your victory, right? Okay, so that ends that. And now that is it for the first round of this game for Omnicron Protocol. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just start, we're going to continue playing the game. It's going to be a little bit off camera and board game maniac style. And when something happens, we will be back and show you the devastation. One thing I forgot to mention, this is probably can be a little bit of a game changer here. So we are going to be starting off our next round. And before we do that, we got to tally up points to like, because once we hit three victory points, then that means pretty much that uh, the next round will be the final round. But right now, I have one victory point because I, I KO'd Flash. And Brady, do you have any victory points? Not you, nope. only one away. I'm one away. Right. So we're getting close. Now, because nobody has any action points left at the end of the round, because you don't have to use up all your action points during the game, if you have any action points left, you can do which is called a bid, so that you can see if you can decide. If you got more action points during the end of the round, you can bid to say, hey, I want to go first, or do you want, I'm letting you go first. But because of that, we each got to roll a die again for initiative. Now, whoever wins the initiative will decide who's going to go first. And whoever goes first is going to get one of the, the foyage cards. These things here, a free foyage card. And the second player gets another action point that they can use this round so pretty much instead of eight they'll have nine action points and the uh, it's a special token it's this action point but it's a larger one it's across the table over there Brady can you grab that token for me for the action point just so that we can show everybody watching so again this is the one that can go back and forth so the second player from round two and on gets this to add to it so now we have to find who goes first so Brady roll your die three for you and I get six. Of course. So I have to decide, do I want to go first? Or do I want Brady to go first? Because this could be a big game changer right here. I don't know yet what I want to do. Let me go first. Um, and you can see what I'm going to do. No, 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 no. Do you know what? Flash only has is able to spend only two action points this round because where I KO'd him. Yeah, let me go first. And each character can only have four action points max for the round. I'm, I'm just thinking on camera here just to see what I want to do. If Brady should go first or if I should go first. And you know what? I decided, Brady, mm, yeah. I'm going first. Yeah, I knew that. So because I'm going first, I get a foyage card. Uh, one of the cards and Brady gets this to be able to use. So anyhow, we'll continue on and we'll be back when something happens. On my activation, one of my activations, I decided to uh, activate Seeker. So Seeker went up, picked up this victory point or supply token drop. And what I also did is I attacked Buck and I stunned him. And I also dropped the snare down too as well. Snares are very interesting because 
when it it's activated and it's going to generate two noise when it goes off so if anybody moves out of an adjacent zone with the snare or into the adjacent zone with the snare beside seeker obviously it's going to kick off and they're going to take some damage and that's not a good thing but you know that that's okay though because that is what uh, seeker did and then seeker did a sidestep because it had one more of the successful die roll to move back, but because of placing a snare, it also generated, generated one noise. And that is the end of Seekers. We're gonna continue on. I just thought it'd be really important and cool to record that there's snares and traps into, uh, into the game, because that is a really cool mechanic that can benefit the person doing it, hopefully. We'll see as time goes on if it's going to work or not. A lot has happened here. So Flash activated after being KO'd last round. And you can see he's moved now here. The snare is gone because he activated the snare. It triggered two noise where the snare was. Flash is stunned. And on top of that, Flash played uh, EMP grenade over here, which stunned these two Sims and it created two noise for his team. On top of that, he also did some his two actions to attack and it reduced uh, Seeker's hit points to one because of the attack. And that was a lot that happened there. So now we're on to the point where the Sims are going to activate now. And because of the noise, this is six noise. And if we look at the, uh, so one Sim is gonna activate for this and the Sim is gonna activate for that too as well because of this. And also here is two noise, but that really didn't do anything. There's nothing around for this. So anyhow, it's one activates for there, one activates for there. We'll do that and we'll be back. The last clip I kind of confused a little bit, but what happened is they don't spawn the Sims. They're just going to act within the range of six. So we did all of this off camera. This spawn, uh, this Sims was uh, stunned, that Sims was stunned, so instead of activating, it took their actions to remove the stun token. And now then the one here moved up and attacked Pi for one damage too as well. And Flash get hit for one, so it, just to reiterate and make sure everybody's on the same page, Flash took one damage during this activation, Pi took one damage, the stun tokens are removed from the two Sims too as well. And that is what happened. Like I said, a lot has happened here, but you can still see that Flash is stunned and Buck is stunned too as well. On one of Thug's turn, something really interesting happened there. I never was able to use any of Thug's ability in the one game that we played off camera because Brady just totally was annihilating Thug. But Thug stepped up to the plate this time with his metal pipe and did some swinging and you can see here, I didn't remove them so I can explain everything. So Thug was here and he managed to KO this Sim and then he did a sidestep, he moved over here and then he used one of his active abilities which don't cost an action point but it generated three EM noise and that active ability was Cyber Blast, Blast, not Bless. If it, cyber, cyber, if it was Cyber Blast then all those CMs would go to heaven. Yeah. So, Cyber Blast, AoE Pulse, Sims are automatically KO'd, all cybernetic, non-friendly characters may be shifted to Hexes. So he KO'd these, and he KO'd them, which gave me up to what I need to get one point, one victory point, because I KO'd five Sims. And these are gone off the board. I just wanted to lay them there just to show, because I didn't record that part. I... And on top of that, then, Pretty much Thug is done. I have a question about Thug. And it's going to be onto Brady's turn. Now Brady, is if it's a serious Thug, question. It, is Thug like an enemy to himself? Why? Because if he considers himself an enemy, then he can move to his bases because he shifts himself. It, no, he, he's not an enemy to himself. He thinks he's a total lean, mean fighting machine. And I'm going to cut it there because it's on to your turn. On the Brady turn, so Brady, what are you going to do? Who are you activating and what are Bolt. you doing? And Bolt is going to use squad tactics. Squad tactics, so that's once per round. Once not once per round, once per game. Per character. Yes, yeah, so what does squad tactics tell you on the card? Firing line. 
Once per game, a character may initiate firing line. All friendly characters within five hatches may make a ranged attack, attack out of activation with out of activation without spending AP action points. This attack gets plus one to any damage result. Now, if you're thinking about activating flash to shoot and buck to shoot, they can't because they are stunned. Did you think that through? <laughs> By the no. look on your face, no. They can still shoot. It doesn't matter if they're stunned or not. They can't shoot if they're stunned because you need to spend one action point to remove that condition. But the only people I can spend that action point to remove that condition is their own characters. Okay, Brady. So since you know that, you're just going to continue on with it. And you're going to use Bolt and Pie to shoot. So what target are you declaring? I'm declaring for Bolt Seeker. Why are you picking on it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Just do it. What Seeker's Dex? Seeker's Dex is 4 plus. So. So I got three, three hits. hits. So that's. So these are That's gone. 4 damage to Seeker because it gets plus 1 damage because I'm using Firing Line. Firing Line? So it's a plus 1 damage? Yeah. Wow. So it's 3 and 3 of them does 3 damage. So you take 4 damage. 4 damage to Seeker. Yeah. After all was said and done, Seeker is taking some severe damage going on here. Oh boy. So now what are you doing for your action now? Your next action? I'm attacking Seeker. Okay, so you use your action point for it? Mm-hmm. All right. So roll away. Wait. Or Seeker's in trouble. I got one hit, and one hit does one damage. Okay, so therefore, Seeker is KO'd. Alright, alright, so KO'd, and then Bolt went up, picked up the Scenario Objective Supply Token, and still though, there's like six, seven, eight Noise Tokens. So now, anything within range of eight can activate but the thing is is they're not going to be able to it oh no no hold on a second so we'll do this one first that's two so it's going to attack bolt and two dice what is bolt's dex again brady bolt's dex is three plus three plus so i gotta get better than three plus oh, oh one so one damage to bolt so next is this one which will move up two and going to attack it would just stay here. No, it would not. It doesn't have to move to attack. But this one here... It would attack immediately once it hits the spot, wouldn't it? No, it would have to move t closer to the noise first. That's why I moved it here. Instead of leaving it there, it would have blocked. And that would have been able to move up. So now we're going to attack Bolt again. Alright, whatever. Two damage on Bolt. Okay. You don't have a card that you can play? I could, but I'm going to play it after... Okay, so this one here now goes up two and is attacking I'm Bolt. first doing this is a cute teddy bear. When a non-friendly model declares an attack against this model, this attack will result in minus one attack, so it only rolls one die. One die. All right. Here it goes. And that is discarded now. And uh, takes another damage. Maybe here's these two cards to discard. Okay, so they're discarded. Now... This one here gets to move two. Before you do anything, how much damage is Flash got? Flash has four damage left. And what about Pi? Pi has one. Oh, Pi got a lot of damage. And Buck is is okay. So one, two. Wouldn't he move closer to the noise so we would go up this way? We already determined that's the way it well, usually works. It was right here, right? So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's five. Because yeah, that's right. So you're right. So we here. One, two. It can only move two spaces, so that wouldn't... It, oh, well, it would attack Pi then. You can choose Pi or Buck. Mm, yeah, I'm going to do Pi. All right, do Pi. Eat Pi. I know you like eating Pi. Two damage for Pi. Two damage, Jay. So, unless Pi got a card that she could play. I had no cards left. Okay. So two damage for Pi with them Sims. With this noise mechanic, the M noise mechanic, Brady, it, it, it makes you have to really think about your stuff a lot more because you may be safe from the 
the other character faction, but you're not safe from the Sims, or safe from the Sims, but not the character. So it makes things go a little interesting and figure out what to do. So that is it for Bolt's action. So now we're on to one of my characters to activate. On my activation, I decided to activate Artemis, and I locked one, Brady had Overwatch on, so I came in line of sight. And because this is KO'd, uh, Seeker's KO'd, it's invisible, so line of sight. Brady hit me for a damage. And then um, she chose her uh, double shot and shot twice at Brady and done some damage. Now, Bolt is down to only one health remaining. And I could spend another action point if I want to, to Artemis to shoot Bolt and finish her off. But the thing is, is we still aren't onto the Sim spawning phase. So, and there's 12 noise there all ready for this. So because of that, I'm just gonna leave it so that the Sims can take care of Bolt, hopefully. And now we're moving on to the next activation for Brady and you are doing Buck. Buck. So what is Buck doing? His ability. And what is his ability? Spend two action points. Oh, for the shotgun blast? Yeah. All right, so and with the shotgun blast. I'm shooting this way. Actually, you can't do that yet because you're stunned. You have to spend one action oh, well, point to remove your spun token. To remove stun. Yeah, you're, I said spun token. Spun token? Mm. So, stun token. And this was a two. I just flipped this by accident. Where's the two at, Brady? He makes four noise, not two. No, but he already had two on him. So, he's at six noise. Yes. So Buck's at six noise, and you're doing your shotgun AOE? Yeah, and so I already checked. One, two, three, four. I get four dice. No, actually, you don't get four dice. You get three dice. No, it's a minimum of three. Right, but he's not in AOE because it's this way and this way. You cannot touch this I'm one. I said I'm shooting this way. So okay, so it's still... So it'd be one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So you can't shoot this guy. He's I'm, out. One, two... I'm doing this one. Hold on one second. Let's look at your AOE template just to, to clear up everything. Okay, he's rolling. He's going to attack. Uh, two of them get killed. So I'm just gonna two of them are, are knocked out, yes. So it would be the, the closest two. Doesn't really matter. To you. Yeah, it okay. would have to be the closest two. So those two, yes. This guy just fixing him right here. I'm kind of wonky at the camera there. So there you go. So what does that bring you up now? I'm at two victory points. Two victory points. So we're tied two apiece. And you are carrying uh, an objective. objective token, right? Yep. All right. This just happened. So on Brady's activation, he activated Pi. Pi went up, generated one noise uh, to control this sim. Move the sim back, then the sim would move towards the noise. So moved here, and then chose to opt to attack Bolt instead of Pi, because the two of them are in the same range. And rolled two hits, so it knocked out Bolt. So then Bolt dropped. No, 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 don't take that off. Put that back there. I I'll explain once you're to you. KO'd, you no. lose your noise. So after that, then this dropped it there now i just wanted to explain first yes once you're KO'd, you lose your noise that is totally correct brady forgot to take that off then. yep and these two are gone and the reason why is because once you're knocked out the noise is gone and when they come back on their turn they only have two action points for the next round and they only heal up to their minimum amount of health so that is that for that you that is a, that for you that. You gain a victory point. Oh yes, I gain a victory point. Plus two as well. Um, I, I'm totally drawing a blank. Oh yes, we still have to do the spawning <coughs> for all the noise and everything. We'll be back. I'm choking up here. I'm choked up. We'll be back after we do that and show you what happened. After all the said and done for doing the sim spawn and then also the the spawn round or the round spawn 
You notice a couple of things have changed here. And what changed, one big significant thing, everything else was okay, but one significant thing is right here. Poor, poor Flash got knocked out for a second time. So now we have three knockout characters on the board and it's getting pretty hairy because I think we only have four Sims left for this that we can use for the game. And on top of that, if we look at the scenario sheet, I'm just going to grab it here. Now, three points. Final round criteria is three points. I am at four scenario points now. So therefore, this round is going to be the last round for the entire game. We still don't know what's going to happen. Brady, how many two. points? Two. You have two, but you're getting close to three because you, you did do some more sim damage. And I have no more sim damage, but I do have the four victory points. So it is still a close race. This last round is going to determine exactly who wins because if we come to a tiebreaker, as I said at the beginning of this video, uh, there's a couple of things we have to look at to see what's going to break the tie. But in any case, we are going on to the final round. Now, Brady has one action point that he did not use. So, are you going to use yeah. that action point? Okay, so who's going to go first? Then it's going to be you or me. Me. You're going to go first. All right, so we're on the final round, and Brady's activating first. All right, Brady, who are you activating first, and what are you doing? Flash. Ah. Okay, so you're activating Flash, so the KO is gone. You heal back up to your recovery health. I'm already there. Okay, yep. That. So this KO marker is gone. And then first, I'm going to do... Remember, you only have two action points that you can spend Timmy this time. Timmy Fetch. Timmy Fetch, or TMI Fetch. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's another one, two. What, how many zones away can you... Uh, six. Six, okay. And then for his next action, he's just going to walk. Pick, or you have walk, to be on top of it. And pick it up. Yep. And that costs an action point, so you're done with action points now. Mm-hmm. For Flash. And you can't move anymore. But I think you just... The reason why you took that up, even though the Flash can't really do anything else, you kind of just... You're demo denying me the action point. No, I might actually be able to do this by relaying. By what? Relaying. What is relaying? Get one character over here to pick that up and then move. You have... You have the ability relay? No, we can just, ex you can trade stuff. If you spend an action point, you can trade with friendly characters. Um, I think that's in the book. I can't remember. We'll, if we come across that, then we'll look to see if that, if that's it or not. So you're down a flash. You're not doing anything else, I obviously. Can't anything you can't else. do anything. Okay, so we're on to one of my activations. Wait, I did something wrong. This didn't cost an action to pick up because of illumination. Would read that again. Once per round, a friendly model may perform a scenario objective at interaction for free. Okay, so you still have one action that you can do for Flash. So for Flash, what he's going to do is that he is going to shoot some lead. Well, how many more do you need to for Sims to kill them? I need two more. Okay, so why don't you try to kill this Sim? This is just an idea because you can't shoot. I'm shooting at him. What range do you have? Six, up to six. Okay, so and you got four attack dice. Plus one. So you're declaring attack on this one right here? Actually, you know what? I'm going to use my squad tactics, firing line. Squad, and your squad tactics is... Um, yeah, so you can do that once per round, correct? Yep. But... You marked it off, so therefore you can't do squad tactics on him anymore. Yeah, after this time, because I just marked yep. it. And what is squad tactics again? I get to make a fight, shoot action with every um, character. Right, but if they are engaged, they're going to suffer penalties. Yes, I know. Okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to use do flash first? Flash first, which is what, four, five, because you're ring. And who are you, you're going to shoot that one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so roll right here. and their dex is three. Yep. It's another one. So that's four hits. And you can spend four to get... I'm gonna do this action. Shoot, I should have shot it 
whatever. So two, we'll I do one damage. I should have shot a different one, but oh well. Um, two, we'll do one damage, but that's not what I'm doing. Okay. I'm first gonna spend these two to use shift to move this guy. That's Kung Fu Girl. You know what I mean. <laughs> All right. So shift one. And for the next, I'm going to... Because you got two left that you can do something with. I can do something with, but these two, I think I'm going to use... Well, the only thing that you can't do now is do damage on one of them. Yeah, I'm going to put damage on them. On her. So on, him. on him. On him? On him? On him. Okay, you're doing damage on Autumn. Yeah. Autumn the Kung Fu cybernetic sociopath. So that was one, and then the next one is Pi. Cybernetic. Yeah. Pi can shoot, but she's to get it. Yes, because Pi is engaged now. So unless you do melee right here, then there's nothing. But it has to be a ranged action. Oh, that's right. And you can't do this. And you can't do this. But I can do this one. You you can't. How? Blocking line of sight. I'm here. I'm going to pass me the measuring thing. Seconds. Just to show you, we picked this up. This is really good. So for line of sight, it's got to be corner to corner. And you can see it's definitely going over from one corner to corner. So Brady does have line of sight onto this saw. This sim right here. I'm, I'm really struggling here right now. So Brady, how many shots are you doing on this? So I get a four automatically, five, and then I remove one because I'm engaged. So roll your die. Actually, you know what? One, one, two, three, four. And can I have a lot of sight to her? Um, we will see. No, because you're you're hitting. See, look, you're you're still hitting that corner right there. So unfortunately, you can't. I, that would have been a good idea, because if you were able that, then you would get an extra point, but you can't. So I guess I have to shoot at. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. So this is corner. Because technically, this guy's in. You don't go from the corner of the base, you go from the corner of the octagon. So technically, it's crossing that octagon too. So you don't even have a line of sight onto this How? one. How? You can only attack this. Because you're not going by corner of the base, you're going by the corner yeah. of the octagon to there. And he's occupying this octagon. You can go from that corner too. There's two corners that you can go by. So this corner here, going across. Yeah, you can do that. That's right. So. Hold on, you might be able to do that. No. Yeah, so you're gonna have to shoot that one. All right, I tried uh -huh. to see if you could get it. It's a close race. Go ahead, Brady, do it. Just do it. Oh yeah, I forgot, oh, it doesn't matter. I get plus one damage. Because? A firing line, I'm using the ability. So, and since Pi has, um, I'm gonna spend two luck tokens on Pi. You can't spend luck tokens on pot. Yeah, but you're using, you're it's technically on Flash's activation, so you can only spend your luck tokens on the character that has the luck but tokens. It says what a but you're, character but you're forgetting a something, line. though. You have a luck token on Flash, so either way, you just spend the luck token so that you can change it. Yeah, but I only I got a one on this. Oh, so you can only spend so, it to... And it says each character may make a shoot action. So it still considers this character... See, I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate or not. If Because the thing is, technically, you're going off of Flash's activation. So I would think that you could only use luck tokens according to whatever character you're going off of. Um, just want to like double check into that, though. Well, we can, we look through and everything else in the book and everything, and it says on all characters, so if that character's making a range attack, then it could use the luck token, so we're just allowing it. So Brady's spending two luck tokens to increase his results. He changed his luck results. You know, Brady, that's four successful hits with Pi. I'm getting hungry. You're getting hungry for pie. So anyhow, so what does the four the I'm four use damage the do? Four damage does three, but I get plus one because I'm doing using firing line, so that sim is dead. Okay, goodbye, sim. And mark it on your board, on your character sheet. If I can grab the marker. Now, before Brady makes his next attack with the other uh, the other character, which is Buck, 
We were looking and you can see Buck here has definitely able to hit onto um, this sim, but also Brady totally forgot about Lucky that was right there. So, and Lucky's kind of hard to hit though because he got high decks. Uh, now with Lucky, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you decide you're gonna shoot Lucky, right? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and just do it. Lucky has a five plus, and I think you hit him for one. I'm spending a luck token on Buck to turn that to a five. So two hits. All right, so then that means Lucky takes his first two damage. Ever. At the end of Flash's activation, managed to kill another Sim. So Brady is now at three victory points and I'm at four. So again, this is very, very close. We could see a tie and then we'll have to go to the tiebreaker at the end of this. Who knows? This will determine everything though. So, and we just gotta keep going on strong now. All right, let's continue on because hopefully it's not gonna be a tie and I'm gonna beat Brady and claim victory. On my turn, I'm going to activate Thug, and he's going to play a card, Medic Medicinal Nanities. And the trigger is played during this model's activation. This model or a friendly character within two hexes may heal five hit points. That's what the card looks like. So I'm activating that one, and none other than Artemis is aside, so she is going to heal up the five hit points, so she is fully healed right now. Good job with Thug. So that was, that didn't take an action. That was just using a card. And now Thug can't really do too much of stuff. He has to just try to get rid of these. Now, I wonder if maybe I should use my Cyber Blast. It KOs all, all, or no, it, it KOs the, uh, the Sins and it will stun any cybernetic uh, non uh, cybernetic non friendly characters, and I think and that's what I might do. But to do that, I have to move first. But target of opportunity, if he moves, it's going to be there. But oh no, he could do these two because they are range one away both. So I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to do his cybernetic blast. It's range one, it emits three noise, but it don't take an action to do, which is really cool. So that's what he's going to do because he's going to KO these both. Next, Thug is going to walk up one right here. And he's going to use an attack, the attack AP, an action point. And he's going to attack this sim right here. Here goes, six dice. And it's a three plus. He has one luck token, so that's three successes, four successes. So, four successes is three damage. So then this sim, or I can stun for two. So if I do stun, and then stun, I can double stun. And if the sims is stunned twice, it kills them. Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do is just, yeah, I'm going to spend it onto the double stun because in his card, he, you spend two and you can stun. That's what I'm doing. So this sim is goodbye bye. So that's another, another notch in his iron pipe. That ends the activation of Thug, and now it is on to one of Brady's activation. You can see everything is just taking place all right there. On Pi's activation, she used the ability of remote control, and she has caffeinate, so once she can do for free, she did that, and then moved other ones to generate. She used up three action points, and it's three em noise right there so now the sims are going to activate on that so within three zones so that's one zone there none there and there so that's all that can i don't know and this one can activate too so that's one two oh brady this is not looking good for you in a way in a way it isn't he's going to activate be able to he can he can he can and he can because they're all three zones away 
from Pi. Mm -hmm. Did you realize that? Yeah. Okay. So first thing is he's going to attack Pi. So that's two attack dice I get for Pi to attack on Pi. And what's Pi's dex Three again? Three plus. Whiffed both of them. Roll two ones. You're lucky. Next one is going to act to just stay there and actually, no. Gonna move one and attack. And one hit for Pi. Okay. This one is gonna move up here and attack. So two dice again. And that's one more hit for Pi. Okay. Mm, this one now is going to move up here because it takes two to move there, but it's still going to attack Pi. Not even on camera, so that one there is there. And one hit for Pi. Okay. And this last one is going to have to move closer to Pi. Whoops. So it can go here and here or just straight there. In either case, that their sim cannot attack Pi because it's kind of like a, a cluster going on there. But that ends the Sims and Pi's activation. Now we're on to an activation for me. On my activation, I actually decided to activate Artemis. I'm really starting to like Artemis. And you can see what Artemis over here, pretty much what happened is she killed the Sims and she placed a snare. You can see right here by the activation thing. And that gave me enough Sim kill count or KO count to give me another victory point. So now I have five victory points so far, which is good. And that's all she could do pretty much. And now it's on to Brady's activation. So Brady, what are you doing? I know what I'm doing. I'm activating Bolt. Okay, so Bolt is not KO'd anymore. And Bolt has two action points that she can spend. And I'm spending one of the action points to put her on Overwatch. Okay, so you moved and then you're, you're doing Overwatch. Yep. All right, and that ends your activation then, I'm assuming? Yep. Okay, so that is the end, and we're on to my activation again. I don't like when you do little tiny movements like that, because it seems like you got something up your sleeve. You know we're in short sleeves. Yeah. Yeah, all right, we'll see. <laughs> and now, we're on to my turn. On my activation, I decided to shoot at Bolt, and unfortunately... Uh, Seeker wasn't that great. She only has two action points that she can do. She spent one action and she totally whiffed the shot. The second action, she managed to get a six. And in her active abilities to concuss when making a range attack, if a six hit result is spent, the target is stunned. So therefore, Bolt is stunned. But that ends the activation of Seeker. And then we're on to one of Brady's activations. It is on to Brady's activation, and he has Buck left to activate. So what are you doing, Brady? Using Buck to spend two actions to use Shotgun Blast. And which way are you aiming? I have to, I'm just aiming this way to clear, to attack these three. Okay, because this could give you some more points. Go ahead. So with the Shotgun Blast, the Sims are stunned, correct? They're killed. Sim, all Sims are KO. Are KO, yes. That's what I meant. And then uh, that was two actions for him. And then I'm going to move one more and use the exact same ability. So you're spending your last two? On um, the Sim. Oh, hold on a second. Mark down on your paper because you knocked out two of them. Because you should be getting close up there now. Or are you close? No. No? Oh. All right. Go ahead. And what did you get this time? Two. Oh, so you cleared out two more. So you get two more on it, so you're one shy. But you got no more action points now, do you? No. So that ends box activation, and the only one left to activate now is Lucky. So Lucky, what is Lucky gonna do? Okay. On Lucky's activation, gonna spend one activation. He's gonna stay where he is, even though he is sitting onto that scenario objective but he's going to sit there and he's going to shoot at pi now pi has one damage left if i'm not mistaken yep so four dice for lucky 
And Pies is what? Th three plus yeah, two. for Dex? Okay, here goes. And Lucky got no Lucky. Lucky got no Luck tokens. But got two sixes. That's really not that good. Oh, wait a minute. When making a range attack with a six result, it can spend, you may shift the target model one hex. That still don't do anything though, but two damage, I mean not two damage, two hit results, and it means a pie gets one damage onto them. So does that mean the pie is KO'd? Yep. Ooh. So that's gonna be another point for Lucky. And then for the second activation for Lucky, He's gonna pick it up, but he can't deliver it, so that's a wasted, a wasted uh, victory point because he's not gonna get it. But KO'd Pi just like that. Already put a KO token. In. Oh, did you? I didn't see. And then that's just gonna add one more victory point for the team of survivalists. Last but not least, now we have to generate the. Uh, the last of the sims activation so first off we go with the noise on the board we have a three here and we have a three here so we'll just pick on uh, thug first so brady you get one sim and you get to go and activate and try to attack thug so two dice for thug oops sorry there you go and five so thug takes Oh, one damage. I'm totally shocked because Brady just didn't really bother with Thug this time. So that's one damage for Thug. And then we go on to Pi where she has three and then I place a Sim. Actually, and the noise is gone. How's that noise gone? She's KO'd. Oh, that's right. So that's it. So now we're just going to have to spawn two Sims each and see what happens there. Guess so. First sim for Brady. Where are you placing it? Right there. And you're, oh, of course, you're going to pick. Now, what I would say, no, that's fine. So you roll two dice. This may be the end of Seeker. What you got? Six and a five. Oh, uh, and Seeker has a dex of four. So that's two hits. Seeker's dead. Seeker's not dead. Seeker's KO'd. Oh, sorry. So Seeker is KO'd, and you get a victory point for that. And now it's my turn to play. I'm just trying to figure out who has the, you know what, just for the fun of it, I'm gonna place the Sim here, move up one and attack Buck. So four and a two wood is box dex. He takes one damage. Okay, so Buck takes one damage. You got one more to, to place. Are you gonna finally pick on poor Thug? What are you gonna do, Brady? Um. So right there, and you're going to pick on poor Thug. I kind of figured. Oh, Thug gets two more damage onto him, but he's still he's still good in health. And now the last sim here. I'm just going to say the heck with it. Why not an attack Buck? One damage on Buck. And that is it for this game. This is the end result of the game. Now you can see the main point was to take the supply and drop them off in your zone, but not one of us, Brady or I, was able to drop off any of the supplies into our own zone. But it did come down to pretty much the victory points of, you can see here on my card, I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six victory points. And Brady has a total of four victory points. So. I win only by two victory points. It was a very close game, very enjoyable, and I don't have anything really negative to say about this game because it was awesome. Well, there you have it, Board Game Maniacs, an exclusive battle report of Omnicron Protocol by Dead Alive Games. If this video is on their Kickstarter, pledge.
I urge you to pledge because it is a great game. It's, it's, the mechanics are seamless, the miniatures are great. Just go and buy it and have fun, pledge. And if they have any of the extra stretch goals and everything, which I'm sure they will, it's gonna be incredible. Just remember, the video that you've seen was with the prototype game. It's not completely finished, but if it can only get any better than this, it can't get worse because this game is phenomenal. So again, go to the Kickstarter, go to their website as well, deadalivegames.com, check them out. And until next time, be a maniac. Boom.